we are blessed to have a bishop is here with us is my spiritual father he has been a pastor from 1980 when I was still in school he was already a pastor praise God one of the oldest serving pastors in this country praise God so let's put our hands together Bishop Aman St. is also the senior pastor of Passover Harvest Center Bishop Oduch, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Please give the bishop and clap and mama. Thank you very much for having me today. The message I'm going to share with you today is on several groups. Several groups. So if you're writing down, that's what you should write. Several groups. The concept of several groups eh? uh, is, is not man's idea. It is not. It is God's idea. It is God's idea. It is It is our Lord Jesus' idea. Like a bishop has told you, I've been in the church for several years as a pastor. Got born again in 1977. Soon after my getting born again, I did mean bandage churches. And only left four religions Islam, Islam Catholics, Catholic, the Anglican Church, and the, the, the Orthodox Church. No, no, no Orthodoxy. The rest were stopped. So it was very risky to get you in a church. Those which were banned, it was very risky. People so were arrested, beaten up imprisoned hallelujah. hallelujah so some of the things I may share with you some of them will be from my personal experience but many of them will be from the bible I'm going to share with you I may not take you in a lot of scriptures but let me give you at least some scriptures the one let me talk about briefly then I will share with you on some message which I call the one another's of scripture the one another's yes the bible contains a lot of one another's a lot and it is one thing we must pay attention to. For example, write down this quickly. Maybe the time may not be there to read everything. In John chapter 13, verse 34. That is love one another. John chapter 13, verse 34. That one command alone appears more than 15 times in the Bible. Number two, be devoted to one another. Romans chapter 12, verse 10. Number three, honor one another above yourselves. Romans chapter 12, again verse 10. Number four, Live in harmony with one another. Romans chapter 12, verse 16. Number 5, build up one another. Romans chapter 14, verse 19. And 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 11. Number 6, be like minded towards one another. Romans chapter 15, verse 5. 
care for one another. Mufanganenga ko. Care for one another. Mufanganenga ko. First Corinthians. Abe Corinthians chisoka. Chapter two of. Shura ya kumi na biri. Verse twenty five. Orua biri mwetan. Next serve one another. Muereze ganenga. Serve one another. Muereze ganenga. Galatians chapter five verse thirteen. Aba Galati ya tanu kumi na satu. Next, bear one another's Gumi, burdens. Mwet kigera na kemi gugu. Galatians chapter six. Galatia shule yomukaga. Verse two. Unyiwa kubiri. Next, forgive one another. Unyiwa ganenga. Ephesians chapter four, verse two. Abe Ephesians shule yakuna unyiwa kubiri. And verse thirty two. No rwa satu mubiri. And Colossians chapter three, verse thirteen. Naba kuli sa isatu kumi na satu. Next is be patient with one another. Mugimu kirizi ganyenga. Ephesians chapter four verse two. Abe fe sonya unyiruwa kubiri. And Colossians chapter three verse thirteen. Naba kolosa isatu kumi na satu. Next is speak the truth in love. Mugere ganengeria amazima mukwagala. Ephesians chapter four. Abe fe se sure yokuna. Verses fifteen and twenty-five. Oru kumi ne tano, nuru abiri mo tano. Be kind and compassionate. Mwenga ba chisa nuksa sira to one another. Nuomo eri mune. Ephesians chapter four verse thirty-two. Abe fe sonya asatu mu biri. Next is speak to one another with the psalms. Nti mugere mugerenga mu zaburi. Hymns and spiritual songs. Nenyimba ezomu yoy. Ephesians chapter five verse nineteen. Abe fe sotano kumi na muenda. Next is submit to one another. Mweto ali zenga bwe mweri munne. Ephesians chapter 5. Abe Ephesians sura ya 5. Verse 21. Oluwa bili mulumu. And first Peter chapter 5. Petero echisoka 5. Verse 5. Unyoro okutano. Next is consider others better than yourselves. Mulo zenga banna mukira mwe mwenyini. Philippians chapter 2 verse 3. Abe Ephesians ah ba Philip bili oloku 3. Next is look to the interests of one another. Mutunuliyenge biyeta gobiya ba namwe mukana mweka. Look to the interests of one another. Mutunuliyenge biyeta gobiya ba namwe. Philippians chapter two verse four. Aba Philip bili unyiruwa kuna. Next is bear with one another. Mugumi kizi ganyenga. Bear with one another. Mugumi kizi ganyenga. Colossians chapter three. Aba Colossians chapter satu verse thirteen. Ulukumi ne satu. Next is teach one another. Muigiriziganyenga. Teach one another. Muigiriziganyenga. Colossians chapter three, six, six, verse sixteen. Aba kolosha ishatu kumi na mukaga. Next is comfort one another. Muzinga mu amani. Comfort one another. Muzinga nyenga mu amani. First Thessalonians chapter four. Aba Thessalonians chapter four, kanya. Verse eighteen. Ulo kumi na muna ana. Next is encourage one another. Mwezenga nyenga mwa amanyi. First Thessalonians chapter 5. Aba Thessalonike chisoka 5 verse 11. Ule 10 na ulumu. Next is exalt one another. Ni musiga nyenga. There are many more. Bingi. Let me end there. Kankoma ulukalala luwanvu. Why are there so many one another? One another? One another? Luachi mulimu nyo bingi buli omwa beri munne 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 buli omune munne. And like I've said I have not mentioned the sum of them. Iranga bwangambye ebirala sibyogede bingi. They are more bitch are your binge. But do you know that when you try to do this one another's na yoch main singa mute kamu nkola bine byogerwa ko kwata gano kala gano at the congregational level kumutendero gwe chibine chinene bwe chiti some of them are very difficult ebi mukubye ko ebi bizibu nyo kusamu nkola some of these I, I, I want you to take a time individually. Eh? You have free time. Sit down. Take one by one. You realize that some of these one another. They are very hard to do at church service level. They are, they are very, very hard to do. Bizibu nyo kora. Praise the Lord. Mukama yeba zwe. If you take these, what we are looking at alone, and try to do them, no geza kubi kora. At the service level, kumutende rogo kani sanga ba kudemu kumi na kani sone ne weiro. They are very difficult. Biba bizibu nyo. The best place where you can do all this. Eh, chifu chinga darabu njobi kora ramu. Are the zero groups? 
So as I share with you, if you want to successfully do what the master wants us to do in all this, please listen very well. I am going to share about several groups and show you the importance of of several groups. They show you also that this, this is not a man's idea. This is an idea found in the Bible. Amina. You see, when we, we come in a church, we are not there on our own. We have a master. He is our chief shepherd. Are we together? He is our chief shepherd. Him as the chief shepherd. There are some things he wants with us. And therefore I'm going to share with some of them with you. Praise the Lord. For example. John chapter 21 verse 15. When they had finished eating. Jesus said to Simon Peter. Simon son of John. Do you truly love me more than this? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Again Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you really love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Na mugamba mundi ogokusa tunti simoni omwana wa Yokana onjagala Petero na nakuwala kubanga mugambe mundi ogokusa tunti onjagala na mugamba anti mukama wange gwo manyibyo na gwo tegera nga nkwagala Yesu na mugamba anti lisanga endiga zange Praise the Lord Kama yeba zibwe you hear, these are three times Jesus is asking Peter Jina mirundi jide satu mukama wa fenga buza Petero and when he asks him era bwa mubuza in both in the three times Peter responds saying that he, is, he loves Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Jesus the first time tells him feed my lambs. Who are the lambs? The young ones of sheep. The young ones of sheep. Those are the ones where concentration number one had to be done. Feed the young ones of my sheep. The young believers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. According to Jesus, the younger ones in the faith had to be fed. Had to be discipled. People are not supposed to be left at the level on which they come. When people first believe Christ, they are turned into spiritual babies. Those spiritual babies have to be fed so that they can begin their spiritual journey developing from one point to a point where they become disciples of our Lord. Real followers of the Lord. So he was cautioning Peter because remember Jesus is now going. He was going. He tells him number one feed my lambs. Number two he tells him Take care of my sheep. It is one thing to feed the lambs. It is another one to take care of the sheep. 
Number three told him Feed my sheep Meaning taking care of the sheep And feeding the sheep are two different things Meaning church is not only about Preaching or teaching the word Some pastors make a mistake They think as long as uh, uh, as long as I give you the word, I've done my part. No, you have not. A church is a family. Not so. Now let me ask you, at home, in, in our homes, without families, families, do we only eat? Tuliabulichoka. Is eating the only thing that makes us uh, makes up our family? Oh, kuriya chichi fula family over maka. Eating is a part of family. Eating is very important. But there are other requirements in a family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A family has to have soap. To wash. They have to have light. To light. They have to have water. A family has to talk. A family. Even if all those are there. But there is no love. The family is lacking something. A family has to have encouragement. When you bring it to church, in the church, the word is very important. Preaching the word is very important. Teaching the word is very important. But your own experience has taught us that individual believers need individual care. They need care. They need somebody who will visit them. In the case of loss, they need consolation. They need encouragement. In the case of stress, they need that someone who is next to them who can raise, who can lift their hearts. Praise the Lord. A church, people need someone who will be there for them to encourage them, to give them hope to respond to their questions. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I preach a sermon here, that day I may preach on love. People have heard about love. But maybe somebody's luck was not love. Praise the Lord. When people come like you have come, not everybody's need is in specific about that sermon of that day. For example, some sermons I can talk about money. I can talk about forgiveness. But maybe somebody's need that day was completely in another area altogether. This is why Pastor Waka is wide. After I give that sermon, individual people need individual care at their personal level. So this is why Jesus tells Peter feed my lambs. Secondly, take care of my sheep. Thirdly, feed them. So it's not only a matter of feeding them. You must take care of them. In that care, there is defense. You have to defend them. Because a good shepherd defends the sheep from the wolves, from the lions, from the bears. That is a good sheep. A good shepherd. And then normally, they don't do that. Only here on the, at the pulpit. As far as pastoral work is concerned, the percentage we do at the pulpit here is far smaller than the percentage that has to be done after here. The visits, the phone calls, the care, the love. The encouragement. Solving problems. Amen. Amina. When you approach, when you, you look at Jesus, how did he do ministry? You see Jesus preaching to mammoth crowds. You see him with the thousands. Feeding thousands. Amen. 
Amina. But Jesus knew ne Yesu yamanya. that alone was Je. not judged. In fact, when you are close look at the book of Mark, it teaches a lot. It was common for Jesus to leave the crowd and go with his twelve. Preach to the, to the, the crowds, heal and deliver. Afterwards, get the twelve. Go live with them alone. Let me ask you a question. When Jesus said yes, we are in John chapter 17 that the work you sent me to do, I have done it. What do you think he was referring to? Do you think really that he was referring to the fact that? I have made big crowds now. I am well known. I am famous. The work has been done. Gwolo was a ringa agamanti inkozo muri mu mune na abantu bantege de katinga manyidwa wona katingumazi. Do you think that was what he was referring to? Had Jesus come and preached Nabulira to tens of thousands and feed them with miracles signs and wonders and die on the cross the church would not have stood. What made Jesus' church was not the thousand bishop. What made his church was not the tens of thousands. Do you remember those tens of thousands one time? They left him, not so. In John chapter 6, they left him. And Jesus told him, the Peters, he asked them, Do you also want to live? What did Peter say? Yes, Peter, we are going back. Where can we go? To now again, that what? Praise the Lord. Look at my ears, we. You have the words of life. God in every gambe you obulam. Amen. Amina. Well, men like Peter had observed that Jesus had had words of life. We were having such young people who were going to Jesus in every gambe you obulam. The large crowd. Had enjoyed the miracles only. Signs and the wonders. One message only. Which told them. I am the bread of life. Whoever eats of me. Will never die. They said, hey, this man. He wants to make us what? It is his body. They all disappeared. The reason Jesus is saying that I have done what you sent me to do is because he had developed his cell group. Hallelujah. In his cell group, he had 12 members. He was the pastor of that cell. He knew. Yamanya, as long as those stand, the work is done. Praise the Lord. This is what he was referring to. This is why he said, Out of those you gave me, I didn't lose anyone no. apart from one. This is how you know that, oh, so he was referring to this group of 12. Because Jesus had lost people. Many had departed. Many had left him. Why doesn't he include them? Why does he say, I lost only one? If he was referring to everybody, he would have said, I have lost many. But he said, I lost how many? He was, he was referring only to the Torah. Amen. Amen. He knew as those ones stand, the work will stand. This is why, even soon after he left, yes. Peter and his other apostles Peter, they they made sure they replaced Judas Iscariot. And they made the group of, to, be, to be of 12 once again. And Jesus was a builder of cell. Yes, he built his cell. He knew that if the cell stood, the work stood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And a close observation of the ministry of Jesus 
shows him so much in people's houses. Now let me ask you another question. Don't you think Jesus had the capability to, to preach only outside and people would, would come? Jesus was not like you. He was not like me. Yes, he was so anointed. He was a man of signs and wonders. Such that for him just to stand across the street, people would come running. You know people. You know people. Eh? Just one miracle brings them. Why then does Jesus frequent people's homes? He is using it to show us a lesson. He is giving us instructions. He is not doing by the ways. He, is, he was teaching. Everything he did, he was teaching. On so many occasions. Jesus is in people's homes. I mean, I mean, why preach in a place which can only in or occupy a few people when you have the capability to go outside and have mammothenaries? Why? He was teaching us. He was showing us if a church will add verse, it should not forget the house ministry. Are you with me? If a church will add verse, church should not forsake house ministry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If he who had all the anointment did, the anointing did it, you and I need to do it so much. More. House ministry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is there in the houses. Where the one or another are fulfilled. You love one another. You encourage one another. You welcome one another. You visit one another. You forgive one another. You do the one another. You sing psalms. You share a testimony. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When we come here like we have come now. We have come to celebrate. But real work is not here. It is not. The real church's work is outside in the communities. In your houses and your neighborhoods. That is where the real work here when we come here only very few of, of us get the opportunity to serve. Like right now you all seated looking at me. I have, I have become a star. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But it, does God really want his church to remain at that status? No. When we come here to celebrate, yes, one of us speaks. The bishop speaks. Or somebody has appointed the speaks. And some few people sing. And the one who interprets. Others are in the sound. Others are with the children. But the rest of us. You just sit. So the question is. When will you do your part? Not every one of us. Our duty is here in the church. Some of us are, cannot get that opportunity. Seriously, if every one of you is going to preach here, some of you will preach in 2099. But by that time, you will not be here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But the Bible shows us how things are done. Jesus was a man of houses. Yes, And when he was sending them two by two, like in Matthew chapter 10, he sent them to God's people's houses. Amen. Amen. 
when men like a Paul, because some of us may think it was only Jesus and his apostles, but even men like a Paul who got born again later, they emphasized the, the house ministry. Can, can you get us 2020, Acts of the Apostles 2020? You know that I have not hesitated preaching to preach anything that would be helpful to you but I've taught you publicly and from house to house. Where that Paul? Paul is another man whose ministry was accompanied with signs and wonders. Paul was another man who could get hundreds and thousands of come to his preaching when he wanted. Why then does Paul also make house ministry central to his, to his life? Why? There is a secret. Building of souls is not done in crowds. Building of souls is done at family level. When people gather in small numbers, four, three, seven, eight, twelve, thirteen, that is where real spiritual life is built. Here, when we come here like this, it is very important. And it has its own purposes. But if you want to build real disciples, where the one and others are experienced. It is in the small group. So what does the Bible say when it says, forgive one another? Be hospitable to one another. Encourage to one another. When, when do we ever see those things? When do I offend her? So that I need her to forgive me. It is in the cell group. In the cell group. Because the cell leader may have told her you prepared the tea. Then the taxi delays. She comes late in a cell. Time there is tea time. The time they check for a tea. The tea is not, is not in the flask. No, the flask at the chai. Now the leader feels offended. Sister, no more. But I told this sister. What happened? In the cell, it is real family. Mububondo, family. Let me ask you: In the family, do we offend one another in the family? In the real family, you offend one another. In the real family, you need the one another. You need to learn to love. Because you are offended. In a real family, you support one another. If you look at each one of those one another, they can only best be done in a family setting, in a cell group. That is when we are tested indeed. Here, 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 here at the church level, at the congregation level, here there are no major tests here. Here we are all born again. Here. Everyone here is born again. Everyone here is an angel. Everyone you look at, you see angels, angel Gabriel, angel Michael, angel, everyone is an angel. Let them now go back. Home. That's when the demons will show. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have seen this from experience. It is in the same. Those things you hear in the book of Acts of the Apostles. People complaining. Because of food. People doing what? It was because they were meeting in homes. Those things you hear in the book of the Acts of the Apostles. That eventually. Everyone whose need was covered. Don't think the needs were covered at the temple level. You cannot. How can you? It is a gathering of 10,000. Can you meet everyone who is needing a 10,000? 
but the Bible says they used to gather in the temple and in the houses it is in the houses where they knew now our sisters and so our children do not have clothes brother so and so is lacking a pair of shoes this family a family is like this. In a cell of 11 people, it is easy to tell. It is because when we gather in several groups, she shares her needs. He shares his needs. And the fellowship joins hands. And we pray. And those needs are shared. We know. Where the need is. How can we help? Even if we cannot help, we know what to pray for. Praise the Lord. It is in several groups where God's love is really expressed. It is not expressed here. Because if you want it to be expressed here, how do we show it? it? By smiling. Hey, hey, hey. Therefore, because I'm smiling, I'm loving. Yeah, I love you. Is, is that love? Love is actions. Praise the Lord. And the love is best shown in several groups. Praise the Lord. Where a person now comes when they are smelling comes when her children are smelling but you welcome them welcome them hallelujah hallelujah the welcome given to them in a cell group differs from that which is given in the church. In that in the cell group, when the cell is done, you talk to these people. As you share the tea, you share the eats, you talk to them. Sister, where did you stay? Where you stay? Where did you stay? Where did you stay? Where did you Where did you stay? Era at the end, some two people accompany her to go and find the home now. I have, from experience, I have learned, Bishop. Usually, what they call a church, in most cases, it's not here. She was not. It's not here. Here we come to, to celebrate Christ. These celebrations are very important. They have also a role they play. This gathering is very important. But when you only gather here on a Sunday and you miss the cell meeting, I can take you to a teaching where I will show you you will have missed a great deal. The Bible has scriptures which say like this. That when the house was being built, there was no sound. When the temple was being built, there was no cutting of the stones. Then where were the, the stones cut? The people who built the church, the stones have to be cut in cells. This is where they develop their singing. It is there where they develop their sowing in the cells. It is in the cells where everybody gets a chance. Everybody in a cell. A cell of 80 people. Everybody gets a chance. Everyone sometimes prepares the tea. Everyone gets a chance to be the one at the door. Welcoming. Amen. Amina. And you learn it. Sister Gundi Wabaya Aliku Muriango. Sister Swan. She doesn't do it so well. Then you get to know it. Maybe that is not my calling. I have not been called for that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You get a chance to facilitate the service. You get a chance to be the one to accompany the cell leader to a new family. And you learn what do you do with the new families? What do you do when you are talking to them? When they, are, they share their problems. What do you do? How do you handle? Everybody gets a chance. In the large congregation, not everybody gets a chance. Hallelujah. So you devote 
develop ministers Kati you develop everyone's priesthood in small groups when the cell groups start in this church please don't say Togamba. these are for some chosen few ah, I am an outsider ah, no ah. you are part of the pastor you are part of the pastor. As I finish, let me share with you our Lord's heartbeat. Where exactly, what, why, what does the chief shepherd want with us? Number one, he wants us to care for all the needs of the flock. You cannot fully do that caring without zero groups. You can. Number two, he wants us to raise up strong marriages and families. You cannot do that and do it very well without zero groups. I have seen how our younger people in the church have helped our marriages in the church. How? They go from their cells and they go and visit those families where the younger people are not, we are not coming to church. Are you understanding me? The father and the mother Tata and mama are in church. Maybe one of the children are in church. But there are about two who have forsaken church. And usually, those two, it is difficult for them to listen anymore to their father and mother. But when the cell groups have sent Younger people of the same ages. They have influenced them. And brought them to church. I have seen that literally. Number three. The master, the shepherd. He wants us to bring each person. To a place of personal maturity in our Lord. Christianity is not static. When you came to Christ, it was a journey. You were supposed to walk it. You were not brought to sit and wait for the end of your life. You were supposed to walk. And in that walk, you don't remain the same. As you walk this journey, you grow into a responsible disciple of the Lord. Experience has taught me you don't do that without zero groups. This is why the church is raising very few disciples. We are raising very few disciples. Because we made a mistake. You don't disciple people when we bring people in the church. The church is our board. Those people we bring, we bring them here. We are supposed to again take them back into the lake. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that now they swim, they swim for the Lord. They help us in the harvest. They bring in more fish. But if we just bring fish in a boat, yes, there may be little water, but fish do not learn to swim in boats. No wonder we have made very few disciples. Number four, the shepherd wants us to foster a strong interpersonal relationships among the sheep to foster strong interpersonal relationships among the sheep whereby those people of those nine people or seven people in that cell they now, there is now real unity there is care 
There's love. They call one another. In our church, on Sunday, the people who sit together, they don't know one another. And they don't care. They don't care. So those one who others are ready for you. Where are they experienced? Not here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you got a cell group. They may be eight. They may be thirteen. They know each other. Actually, they all know. Unless they are new ones. If not, they all know where each one lives. They all know what they do. They all know this family, family needs this prayer. That family needs that prayer. It, it is in the same group where your church is real church. Real family of, the, of our Lord. Family Number five. The chief shepherd wants us to assist and equip each person in finding and fulfilling their place of ministry. Number six, to be available to each member of the body for counseling, support, encouragement, and comfort. Number seven, to gather lost sheep. And they integrate or assimilate them into the flock. As I end, one of the very good Good things with cell groups is that the church can grow in size in numbers, but when the people are also growing in the Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah, people are changing. When the people come together, they confess to one another, they confess their sins, they ask for prayers. So, the church is growing. Both spiritually and numerically. Hallelujah. Amen. Churches without cell groups, see? some of them can grow in numbers. But the people will find it very difficult to grow spiritually. You find those people Born again, eight years. She comes every Sunday. Ask them to bless food. And they will look down. Church member, eight years. She cannot even give thanks for a meal. She fears demons. People where she works have demonic cases. She cannot even dare start to pray for them. In cells, you gradually overcome that. Everyone realizes I am responsible. Everyone realizes I have to learn to pray for others. Amen. A church with zero groups eventually develop so many witnesses. So many. Do you know what happens eventually? You begin getting people from all corners of the city. Why? Because unlike before, when only that small apartment used to, to witness, now every cell is witnessing. This, your cell in Ichireka is witnessing. In Banda is witnessing. Uh, the one in Luzira is witnessing. The one in Butavika is witnessing. So on Sunday, every cell oh, is bringing people. So eventually, you see people coming from all corners of the city. I love this. And our master loves this. That is the example Jesus set. Yes, and that is where we are going back to. It really works. Shall we bow down our heads and pray? Heavenly Father, I thank you.